Hi everyone, I am recording this video the topic on the gap between institutions and industry in India and in US also. My observations, I am recording it from bottom of my heart. I am speaking truth. So if you are suffering from hypocrisy like my haters, so don't kindly uh, watch my videos. Thanks. I am recording it for the sake of the world, not for the attention like some guys are commenting. Okay, let us not bother about my haters. From my childhood I have seen, I have interacted with various government uh, officials, dignitaries while working in the government and AP, uh, Mr. Chandrababu's IT team. And before that also I interacted with various, those days we have a MR, MDO, or uh, school inspectors, inspection, inspection, other artists like DU, MU, all that. And then I have seen, I mean, I studied in government, private, and all that. So, based on that, and once after my finishing my graduation, I came to Hyderabad for uh, computer hardware, software, whatever. So, I have seen, and I'm, based on my experiences, I am recording it so that the next generation and people will be aware of it. Point one is there is a huge gap between educational institutions and the industry, especially these days in India. Those days in my father's uh, student days and all those days in my cousins. So there were colleges called Polytechnic and the ITI. It's like one or three years diplomas when I tried. So while well, after finishing your three years polytechnic diploma after the tenth grade, people get jobs and then they do colleges. We take three years in night college. This is what my uncle, relatives, friends, many or friends, fathers, they all did during those times, 70s and 80s. Eventually that was collapsed or destroyed by the our educational system, corporate mafia. So now only option is BTEC. If not BTEC, then life is a struggle. That's what I have seen in India. Lack of BTEC, uh, getting into IT and all. That is phase one. Phase two, these days, top ten outsourcing companies. And unfortunately, we depend only on the outsourcing, whether it is from uh, Europe, Middle East, or uh, ESA. So most of the projects, including Canada, most of the projects are outsourced. As well, so we have to depend on the outsourcing software, right? So there is no creation of jobs. Phase three. So these companies go to educational institutions, we take top ten colleges or whatever. So they hire by paying some amount, whatever. That's fine. But what about rest? So that's what almost in the year 2013 I interact with some B Tech guys graduates who got through this campus placements and uh, chart out a program to freely educate the people who or could not place through the jobs who could not get the jobs through the campus placements so i've been to some villages and in east godari district and i explained them this is what you need so what i did is as a human being i'm doing I am not hating anybody, I am loving everybody. As a woman being, I did part of my job. I don't know what government is doing, what industry is doing. Why don't industries educate them? Like, for example, Java is in demand or Hadoop is in demand. It is not like, I mean, stop all your BTEC subjects and teach them Hadoop, but at least the, the Industry and the educational institutes have to go in hand in hand, like a tra railway parallel tracks, right? Like they have to go in hand in hand, but that connection is completely missing in India. Those who could not get through campus placements, they don't have any choice. See, if you are a student studying in India or MS here, don't take it personally like that. I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking what's happening there in year two. So they don't have a choice. They have to go to Switzerland or UK or ESA or wherever. Singapore, some guys they went to China also for medicine because there is no employment potential in India. So they don't have a choice. They have to get out of the country or they have to join any anti-social elements or any religious fanatics groups. 
the survival of the fittest, right? Bread and butter. They feed money, they give money, any nationalism or religious groups, all that is business. They give money. So that is the gap between the industry and the institutions. Uh, there must be some institution or system that must fill the gap. Otherwise, students continue to suffer. And a lot of articles I read saying that uh, so many engineering colleges, no standard, even the Honorable Chief Minister of Telangana also said all this is like a fault reform. So all that, so there is no standard, all that, something, everybody has to read, the educated people have to speak. Because I am speaking, guys are posting comments like a terrorist. You have to speak, you have to question the authorities, otherwise they sleep in the system in spite of taking highly paid government salaries from the tax tax paid amount right and constitution protect their jobs they're sleeping that's what when i went ex colleague uh, still working in government he said these guys collided with uh, corporate mafia and uh, complete ap education is taken over by only two corporate mafias that's one so they all come to america right those who are could not get when it comes to America, here also I have seen what is top 10 outsourcing companies are doing. I have been to a lot of stuff I mean, last 80 years. So I found these in, on their website, I don't know how far it is true. They go to universities and colleges and they create awareness program about the what industry is doing to the students of the universities and colleges. But I don't know how far they... What is the mechanism? I can open a website and write anything, but who is checking it, right? So that's point one. Point two is, if they are doing it, why students fake their resumes, right? So third point. So if there is a STEM universities demand, then why STEM university students are not getting paid and par with Americans? So it might be false or true, yeah, it's left to you. Fourth point. If there is a huge demand for STEM students, then why don't American corporations hire them? Why do they need to approach the Indian links who fake their resume, who f practice felony, who do not pay money properly and then who rip them because OPT and CPT students, they do not have any minimum prevailing wage like h one b right, 25 and the prevailing wage in some areas, 45. So all that all Indian things break, OT, over time, time and day off. So these students think that they are the guard and they are pushed to the, through felony and they support felony, proxy project support for 2000 bucks for two months. So why do all that, that means something problem with the universities in ESA, which are lack communication from the American corporations. Like for example, I come for MS, I studied MS Mechanical. So what is my way of, so I have to go out of the country after my CPT expires, 12 months, or I have to approach the Indian Inks for H1B to fake my resume, to fake everything. There I will lose my character, right? When character is lost, everything is lost. Because everything is lost, I feel ashamed to go back. That's what as a student, if I, fortunately and unfortunately, if I were, a student entered this country, that was my feel, real feeling. I tried for MBA, I, did, I could not get visas. That is a feeling. And the next point is, if there is a huge demand, why don't American corporations hire them? Like I said earlier, if American corporations could not hire them, then what is America doing? America book rule is clear, after your studies you have to go back, but nobody would like to go back because given the poverty, cash, corruption situations in India are out of 180 nations. That's the reason nobody would like to go back. That is a fact. They want green card, they want dollars, everybody wants to settle here, everybody wants to fulfill their America dream. They want to develop America. This is very good, we have to appreciate for that because everybody wants to thrive in life, get succeed. And then they want their next generations to be more more successful, right? But all this fake felony, whatever, Indian things, outsourcing companies, they are not creating jobs like American corporations are giving projects to the Indian companies, outsourcing companies to replace the highly paid Americans. This cost 20 million Americans jobless and homeless. It is because the communication between 
industry and the institutions. They don't know what to do. So they invite more students because universities need funds. Like during our my engineering college days, people used to go to Karnataka with a suitcase. Suitcase means full of cash. It's a donation, it's called. Donations to pay in neighboring state and uh, study BTEC there. Later they started uh, during the one of the former Chief Minister Nedrubal Janardhan at the time. They started the capitation fee system. That's where I, I get struck. High Court has given stay orders. Stay orders and High Court has given stay orders saying that capitation fees is not, uh, not to be introduced in the existing quota. It should be separate seat. Something similar, all the people are coming to America and feeding you used universities with used money. That's what I found. And nothing more than great. And uh, only the top three universities here is great because they are getting placed without faking resume. Rest of them have to fake uh, because they don't. They are fear to write their uh, MS finished in resume because if they write, the resume speaks seven years or ten years local experience, which they cannot. So obviously, they, everybody has to fake it. You cannot find a student who didn't even or fake his resume. He has to fake. And uh, in mechanical, I studied MS Mechanical. How can I do a computer Java programming? So definitely, such students have to approach the even IT also. You know, lack of experience, right? Seven years experience from zero. So employers will do all kinds of crimes to push them. So here they lose their character and the career. That's what this lack of gap between industry and uh, institutions killing the people here. Lack of gap, due to huge gap between industry and institutions pushing these students to these kind of uh, criminal activities by Indian names and then they lose their character and career here. Uh, and f that's the reason that nobody would like to go back. The, and second part is the gap, huge gap between Indian rupee and dollars. Conversion is 66 Indian rupees. And rupee is weak, no doubt. That's the reason everybody wants dollar, everybody loves dollars, everybody wants to come in America, everybody loves America, everybody loves green card. This is what nobody wants to openly tell. So what to do? You have to find out the way and then people have to fix it. And, uh, and there are systems and institutions, right? People have to take care. And, so far I come across, I also attended some caste meetings, not for caste purpose. I had caste, caste means Americans who are not aware. It is a thousand times or million times dangerous than racism. Racism means skin color, either brown or white or black. But whereas casteism is inhuman, barbaric act. So I attended one of the caste meetings just to see about IT companies, at like local body shoppers. So these IT things, this, uh, the caste groups organize a meeting, they said like the old students, they will do this, that for in India, that if they do really that, then there will be a great change, right? So, honestly, I did not come across anybody who is striving for India's success or some, want to do something for the India. Very few are doing, like Siva, Jasti, some people I come across uh, in Facebook, who are doing for the schools back home. Honestly, everybody wants to reap the newcomers. One second, they want to establish business there. They want to loot, cheat people here and there, and more money. They want to tell prestige. I mean, I mean, America. So what? That is what uh, bottom line for many guys to say. I mean, America. But I don't come across anybody struggling to fill the gap between these two. I'm just leaving open. I'm not saying this is wrong. This is bad like that. The situation is worst there and here. That is the reason people are becoming, Indians especially become nomad tribes, travel to 52 countries almost and settle there. We don't have, because our politics and economics is very weak. So somewhere people, educationists and then politicians and then officers who are drawing, people pay taxes as salaries and constitution protect their jobs there have to take care in the media and uh, other guys also have to do that how long we will play this stupid game right you invite students but you push them to Indian news almost literally push them to the states you give them green card that is valid for six years ten years uh, 
avoid middlemen, cut the middlemen layers, let the student directly go to the American corporations and they pay you money. Otherwise, stop giving visas, shut down your universities if you cannot fill the gap between the industry and the institutions. So don't pull all the people like a magnet into America and then crush their lives by losing their character and career here. That's what I found. I've, and I met a student who was studying in the open university also. He followed my videos and then he contacted. And the educational consultancies in India are completely unaware what's happening here. They are like a doing, doing broker job. So they told him three years degree is not allowed or something. But studying in born in India or studying three years degree is not our fault, right? So then he directly approached the university. He got admission card from the number one university and the, in the interview they didn't ask any questions because it's from that university. So he's studying now and it's tough to find a what do you call uh, job, temporary job or whatever, an OPT or CPT or whatever. And then probably he decided to go back because he doesn't like to fake resumes come to the Indian links. So that is what happening. Of course he learned whatever the best he can from uh, American University. But what is the way out? There is no outlet, there is no career goal, there is no clear path. The immigration system is broken or not, I don't want to comment, the general comment, but it is completely abused by people here running h and business, out of which majority are Indians and I also come across American middlemen also looting dollar forty five an hour cut and loot h one b's money. Basically, American corporations, American middlemen, Indian middlemen, Indian links are highly benefited from these all visas. We are crushing our lives here because of the huge gap between institutions and industry here, one. And in India also, because of that, they are leaving the country. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, curious at usa.com. Email me. And uh, yesterday, today, previous days, some guys writing filthy to me. You write that filthy to your parents. Okay, you tell if you want to say bastard or chutia to me, you tell your parents. Thanks and heads off to my haters because of them I made this video.